Ever wondered why sugar dissolves faster when it's in a powdered form compared to in cubes? The answer lies in the concept of specific surface area. You see, specific surface area is a measure of how much outside area an object has relative to its mass or volume. It's a bit like the skin of an apple. The more you chop it up, the more skin is exposed. This concept is not just limited to sugar cubes and apples, but it's an integral part of many fields including chemistry, physics and engineering. Imagine a block of solid material. If you break it down into smaller pieces, the total volume remains the same, but the surface area increases. This is the principle behind specific surface area. The more surface area per unit of mass or volume, the more reactive or absorbent the material is. So, let's dive into the world of specific surface area and explore its intricacies. Now you might be thinking, why should I care about specific surface area? Well, it has a lot more impact on our daily lives than you might realize. Take a moment and think about sugar. You probably have both sugar cubes and powdered sugar in your kitchen. Have you ever wondered why powdered sugar dissolves faster in your coffee than sugar cubes? This is because powdered sugar has a higher specific surface area than sugar cubes. The greater the surface area of a substance, the more space it has to interact with other substances, leading to an increased rate of reaction. So when you're in a hurry for that morning coffee, powdered sugar is your best friend. But it's not just about sweetening your coffee. Specific surface area plays a crucial role in the pharmaceutical industry too. Ever noticed how some medications are available in tablet form while others are in a capsule? That's because a medicine's absorption rate in the body can be manipulated by changing its specific surface area. Tablets have a larger surface area, allowing for quicker absorption and faster relief. On the other hand, capsules have a smaller surface area, providing a slow, steady release of medication over time. So the next time you pop a pill, remember that the specific surface area is working behind the scenes to get you back on your feet. And it's not just limited to your kitchen or medicine cabinet. Whether it's the soil in your garden, the catalyst in your car's engine, or the paint on your walls, the specific surface area is quietly making a significant difference. In soil, a larger surface area allows for more water retention and nutrient absorption, promoting plant growth. In your car's catalytic converter, a larger surface area enables more effective emission control. And in paint, a larger surface area results in a smoother finish and better adhesion. As you can see, specific surface area is a key player in many everyday phenomena. So, the next time you dissolve sugar in your coffee, take a tablet or even paint a wall, remember the unseen hero, the specific surface area. But how do we measure specific surface area? It's not like we can just lay out all the particles and measure them with a ruler, right? Well, you're absolutely correct. Determining the specific surface area of a substance isn't quite as straightforward as measuring a length or width. But don't fret, we've got some clever techniques up our sleeves. Let's start with the brunner emmett teller method, or as it's better known, the BET method. This technique involves the adsorption of gas molecules onto a solid material. Think of it like a bunch of tiny gas molecules sticking to the surface of a solid. The quantity of gas adsorbed is directly related to the surface area of the solid. So, by measuring how much gas sticks, we can calculate the specific surface area. Now, this may sound a bit complicated, but it's actually a pretty nifty way of measuring something that's otherwise quite tricky to determine. On the other hand, we have the Langmuir method. This method also involves adsorption, but with a twist. The Langmuir method assumes that the gas molecules form a monolayer on the solid surface, meaning they only stick in a single even layer. This method is particularly useful for materials with a relatively small surface area. Both the BET and Langmuir methods, though different in their approaches, share a common goal to accurately determine the specific surface area of a material. And while they might seem a bit complex, they're both incredibly effective and widely used in scientific research. These methods allow scientists to accurately measure the specific surface area, which is crucial in various fields. Whether it's in pharmaceuticals, where the surface area influences how quickly a medicine can be absorbed, or in materials science, where the surface area plays a role in the material's reactivity, Knowing the specific surface area is key. 
So the next time you're faced with a seemingly immeasurable task, remember the BET and Langmore methods. They prove that with a bit of clever thinking, even the most complex measurements can be made. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later. So we've talked about what specific surface area is and how we measure it, but where do we actually see it in action? Let's dive into the fascinating world of specific surface area applications. It's everywhere around us, often hidden in plain sight. First, let's take a look at catalysis. In a nutshell, catalysts speed up chemical reactions without being consumed by the process. Greater the specific surface area of a catalyst, more the number of active sites available for reactions. This is why nanoparticles, which have a high specific surface area, are often used as catalysts. An everyday example is the catalytic converter in your car. It uses platinum, palladium, and rhodium nanoparticles to speed up reactions that convert harmful gases into less harmful substances. Next, let's discuss drug delivery. Drugs with a larger specific surface area dissolve more rapidly, leading to faster absorption in the body. This is a key principle in pharmaceuticals. For instance, consider aspirin. When you have a headache and take an aspirin, you want it to work quickly. To achieve this, the aspirin is often ground into a fine powder, increasing its specific surface area and therefore its dissolution rate. Moving on, we find specific surface area playing a significant role in adsorption. Adsorption is the adhesion of atoms, ions or molecules from a gas, liquid or dissolved solid to a surface. The higher the specific surface area, the greater the adsorption. This principle is used in a wide range of applications, from water purification systems to gas masks. Activated charcoal, for instance, has a very high specific surface area and is used to absorb harmful substances in both these applications. Lastly, let's discuss material science. The specific surface area of a material can greatly influence its properties. For instance, in the construction industry, the specific surface area of cement is a critical factor. A higher specific surface area means more surface for water to react with, leading to stronger cement. Similarly, in the electronics industry materials with high specific surface area are used to make supercapacitors, which store and release energy much faster than conventional batteries. So as you can see, specific surface area is not just a concept confined to the laboratory. It is deeply entwined in our everyday lives, affecting everything from the air we breathe to the medicine we take, the water we drink, and even the buildings we live in. It's a hidden hero, quietly improving our lives in countless ways. From the medicine we take to the materials we use in our daily lives, specific surface area plays a crucial role. We've covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? Let's quickly recap what we've learned. We started off by understanding what specific surface area is. We learned that this is a property of solid materials, which is the total surface area of a material per unit of mass, volume, or other relevant quantity. It's a measure of how much of a material's surface is exposed, and it's used in a wide range of fields, from chemistry to material science, and even in environmental studies. We then delved into why specific surface area is important. The significance of this property is that it affects the material's physical and chemical properties such as strength, reactivity and adsorption capacity. It can impact how substances interact with one another and can be the difference between a successful experiment and one that doesn't quite hit the mark. It's the reason why powdered sugar dissolves faster than sugar cubes or why a sponge can absorb more liquid than a block of the same material. Next, we explored how we can measure specific surface area. We learned about the BET method, which is an abbreviation for Brunauer, Emmett and Teller. This method uses gas adsorption to calculate the specific surface area, taking into account the physical adsorption of gas molecules onto a solid surface. It's a standard method used in laboratories worldwide. Finally, we looked at some applications of specific surface area in action. We saw how it plays a critical role in industries like pharmaceuticals, where it's used to control the dissolution rate of drugs, and in environmental science, where it helps in understanding the behavior of pollutants in soil and water. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe for more because you won't find me later.
The world of science is vast and fascinating, and understanding the basics, like specific surface area, can open doors to deeper knowledge and exploration. Keep exploring, keep learning, and until next time, stay curious.